over 25 years old and still about as good as you can get. Coming up. AEAC is made possible by Air Venturi, Hawk Optics, Diana Air Guns, FX Air Guns, Day State, Air Arms, Sports Match Rings UK, H&N Sport, Aztec Optics, and JSB Predator Pellets. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Seven hundred is to bolt on one hundred and fifty. This, I feel like I can do it one-handed, and I can still. As always, operations manager the already. I've done a full tuning guide on this on my eighty ten. Granted, we're talking a twenty-five yard cut. The Weirau HW97K is made in Germany and is the latest revision of the 1980s introduced HW77. The main difference between the two models today are the open sights, muzzle brake, and stock. The 97K is available in 177, 20, 22, and 25, and it can be had in any of six different stock and metal combinations. The blue laminate you see here weighs in at 8.2 pounds by itself and 10.7 pounds to include an MTC scope and hefty sports match mount. It measures 40 inches long and 47 and a half inches with the optional Virau baffled moderator. The factory warranty is one year, but that changes to limited lifetime when you buy your Virau through Air Guns of Arizona. You can pick one up from the good folks there for between $545 and $760. Stock choice and metal combo dependent. The 177 is powerful in a perfect kind of way. 10 grain pellets leave the muzzle making about 14 and a half foot pounds and arrive 50 yards away still holding on to 9. At 25 yards they thump at a solid 12. This factory induced harmony between power and an easy going shot cycle are what make the 97K so well mannered and easy to shoot well. A trait sadly gone from most US market springers these days. After a few hundred shots, standard deviations and extreme spread settled into 4 feet per second and 13 feet per second respectively, and continued to improve as things broke in. Some velocity spiking dieseling was present until about shot 75. Outside of that, this 177 model pushes an 8 grain to about 900 feet per second and a 10 grain to about 820. The HW97K takes advantage of a fixed barrel sliding breech under lever cocking design that adds a heap of performance and rigidity to this platform. What that means to you is the highest level of repeatable accuracy throughout the rifle's life, as well as no barrel droop. It also means a precision alignment between barrel and receiver that's so good, I had near perfect point of impact at 25 yards on an optically centered scope. A startling first for me. The rifle also takes advantage of a capless one-piece machined receiver with threaded rear section for strength, an 11mm dovetail rail for your favorite optic, and an ambidextrous stock with rubber butt pad. Its record trigger is dual stage, match grade, and is easily adjustable. The well-placed safety auto-resets with each cock, and while it's supposed to be resettable by recocking the gun, mine was not. I was also disappointed that the gun cannot be decocked. So, is the Virau HW97K right for you? The 97 is probably the least hold sensitive springer I've shot. It does just as well on the double bags as it does in the hands. And while it's still a springer and you still gotta do your part, it just doesn't make you pay the price for not doing things perfectly. That is compared to other spring guns. The takeaway is that that added forgiveness makes it a more enjoyable shoot so that you can enjoy it on the bench, as well as in the field. The 97 laminate is heavy, but not bulky, and feels super great coming up in the hands. Cocking is smooth and light, but the downward angled breech is a little bit less accessible, and a tad more cumbersome to load than the skyward facing breech on a typical brake barrel. But what you lose in convenience, you gain in performance. It truly is difficult to shoot this gun poorly.
At 25 yards, it ate just about everything well, to include slugs and polymags. At 12 and a half grains, the slugs are really gonna test your shooting skills. Their added weight increases their dwell time, and the increased dwell time leaves more time for you to screw something up in your follow through. But if you stick to the 8 to 10 grain window, you can be sloppy and still be good. So if you're not getting the accuracy you want out of your favorite Springer, try going lighter on the pellet. You might be surprised at what that does for you. The 97's shot cycle sounds buzzier than it feels. In the hands, most of that noise gets sucked up by the heavy metals and dense lumber, making the shot cycle feel quick and snappy. The result is a rifle that feels of better quality to the shooter, and is easier to shoot accurately. Bottom line, the harmonics have a tuned quality feel to them, and the recoil doesn't twist the gun out of your hands. It's non-violent and straight back every time assisting in that critical Springer follow-through. If you want to go faster and flatter, go lighter on the pellet. These 8 grain polymag shorts will get you there and they'll provide some impressive expansion for hunting. But their lighter weight means a little less downrange energy and resistance to moving around in the wind. The 97 sort of like the metal mags too, but not as much. And in a zero wind environment, these polymag shorts did even better than you're about to see here. If you don't have access to polymags, the H&N Hornet did pretty okay at 25 too. Shooting between the wind gusts is key, especially out at 50 yards and even with a 9 and 10 grain. These two I smeared to the right at 50 with a 9.5 grain Barracuda FT came from a 4 and 6 mile an hour wind out of my 10 o'clock. So know the limitations of your 14.5 foot pound 177 Springer. While they can be impressively accurate at 50 yards and beyond, they're also quite susceptible to being pushed around by the wind.
for more on the backstory as I learned my way through the HW97K, you can visit me on my second YouTube channel, 8YAC Vlog. I share a lot of information, discovery, and findings there that you won't find here. So for the full story on my discovery and approach with the 97, be sure to check out that other video. It's 53 minutes of viral fun and learning that you won't want to miss out on. If you guys like what you're seeing in this brand, a YouTube search for AEAC and Wairau ought to bring you up a lot of great content and learning. Wairau has been running their famous record trigger in their springers since at least the 1980s. And for the 25 and 50 yard work you see me doing out here today, it's a practically perfect two and a half pound two stage out of the box. Now I did refer to the owner's manual and follow the instructions there and was very easily able to reduce that brake weight down to a clean pound and a half or so. But if you want to learn more about that, visit me on my other YouTube channel, 8EAC Vlog. Now that first stage take up is very clean and very light and does come up against a well-defined wall. And with about a pound and a half more pressure, it's gonna cleanly let off. One pound, 9.7 ounces. The word on the street is that spring guns don't shoot slugs well. And if you've been told this, what they might have meant to say is that they are extremely difficult to shoot well by the operator. You see, most air gun slugs are designed for powerful PCPs, so they tend to be on the heavy side. And heavy ammo relative to the caliber you're shooting is really going to put a lot of demand on the springer shooter. Now, of course, while a slug may not like a particular Springer's barrel, speaking in generalities, it's more likely that their increased dwell time in your barrel has put a magnifying glass on any imperfections in your approach and follow through. So if shooting slugs is important to you, just remember to be patient with them and yourselves. Now, another good topic of discussion is, are they worth it? I would say probably not for most moderately powered Springer's and maybe for the Magnum powered ones. For me, it would come down to, do they do better than the pellet I'm currently using at the distances I'm currently using it at? And do they offer better expansion than the hunting pellet that I'm currently using? So bringing it all together, a slug is generally a heavier projectile. In a spring gun's slow and jarring shot cycle is gonna be aggravated as you go heavier on your pellet or slug. And this is why I believe a lot of people say heavy pellets and slugs don't work well out of spring guns. And from that general perspective, I'd have to totally agree with them. I'd much rather shoot the lightest pellet I can get away with that stays within a velocity that'll keep it stable in the wind out to the distances that I'm shooting it. It's really as simple as that. So for this gun, seven and a half to 10 and a half grain pellets are what I enjoyed shooting most.
At nine and a half grains, the H&N Sport Barracuda FT has been an excellent pellet for the HW97. It's a lighter weight version of the Barracuda, and at 25 yards, it more than proved itself. Here's my 10 shot hole for the shot string I shared with you guys. At 50 yards, it maintained its level of performance, despite being moved around a bit by the wind. The MTC Mamba Ultralight is Springer rated and is a great choice for the HW97K. Its one inch tube keeps the weight down. And while it's a $300 price point scope, its $500 optics coatings keep the lens super bright. Its milled out reticle is super sharp too almost too sharp in some instances. But what I probably like best about it is how easy it is to rotate its AO dial. The same goes for its magnification dial. In an era where these have gotten ridiculously stiff, these ones have not. With positive clicks, the turrets did what they were supposed to do, and the scopes held zero for the over 500 shots that I've put on it. And the warranty is five years. What more can you ask for for 300 bucks? It too you can pick up at Air Guns of Arizona, as well as the Sports Match Rings UK DM60 Dampa Scope Mount. Together they're rock solid. Virau offers an OEM accessory moderator specifically built for the HW97K. So to the cost of 99 bucks, you can thread on a little bit more quiet. Its quality matches the 97, it looks good, and it's easy to add. As with all accessory moderators, expect your point of impact to change, and expect it to stabilize some pellets and slugs and not others. At 25 yards, I ran a simple test to see how it would do with five pellets that I had previously established as performers out of this gun and three out of the five continued to run stable. The HW97K in 177 is about a 15 foot pound deal, so there's just not a whole lot of snap coming out of this end. Any noise that's emitted from the gun comes from its spring power plant and kind of comes out of this area here. This break you see up at the top here is just a hollow tube, 
But any way you look at it, there's just not a whole lot of sound coming out of this gun. Now to my surprise, Viro makes an aftermarket OEM baffled moderator specifically for the HW97K. And also to my surprise, this thing actually really works to significantly reduce the sound output of this Springer. It too you can pick up at Air Guns of Arizona. Well, that is all for today, guys. And special thanks to Air Guns of Arizona, Virau, Sports Match Rings UK, and MTC Optics for getting all of this into my hands to review for you. <laughs> you guys know the best way to thank them for that one. Now, from here, you all want to head on over to the Air Gun Nation forum so that you can participate in the discussion thread on the HW97K. I'll leave you a link on how to get there in the description down below. So with that, 
I'm Steve Shally. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great week everyone.